It's the front page Saturday Town Hall edition. Woo, on some Ferris Day. Okay, so look, we're talking about where are the good jobs at? Finding employment, keeping employment, creating employment under this pandemic. And what are we going to do about that? How can we um, find resources? How can we feed our families? And I'm so pleased to introduce our next guest. She is the founder of The Plug. Um, and it's an online news site. They cover work and the culture of black innovators. She's a social impact storyteller, a social entrepreneur, and an advocate for environmental, social, and economic equity in underserved communities. Sherelle Dorsey, it's so nice to meet you. Welcome to the front page. Thank you so much. Um, it's a pleasure to be here, Dominique, and great to speak with you this morning. We talk about black innovators. I mean, that is sort of the foundation of the best of what is America, in my not so humble opinion. But certainly right now, more important than ever, right? Absolutely. Um, we are living in a time, of course, where the world is so much more digital and virtual. And this pandemic has accelerated our move towards remote work, remote learning and automation. Um, so to speak. And so we, we know that for black and brown people in this country, we over-index on service-based roles and jobs, and those have really been the most at risk. And so though we have had to innovate to, to overcompensate, so to speak, for some of the things that we don't normally have access to, um, a lot of times, you know, we we don't get to participate in the general fruits of how technology is moving a society forward. And so it's super critical. And I think this conversation is definitely apropos considering the time that we're living in right now in terms of how do we start to plan for those jobs of the future. Yeah, I mean, when you talk about over-indexing, you, you know, with this conversation about black uh, workers in particular, Latinos too, but being in the most, you know, danger in terms of those jobs during the pandemic, the you know, not just the healthcare workers, but also people serving food and all of these things. And when we look at what's coming up in the future, of course, service jobs are always probably always going to exist until they get robots to do them all. But these innovative opportunities to either get involved with something that already exists or create your own thing online is probably the safest space we could be in right now, right? That's absolutely correct. Absolutely correct. So give me an idea of like, you know, other than, of course, we can <laughs> subscribe to the plug and start getting more awareness of what uh, is actually out there. Um, give me an idea of where you would start um, if you wanted to make that kind of a pivot in your own career. Absolutely. The great thing is that there are so many available free online resources. And so um, even if you're accessing a computer or an Internet from the library, which I think they have started to, to open up a bit slowly here around the country, um, you know, Google has certificates and training programs that are free. Um, IBM has a, a free uh, data science certificate. So I would really encourage people to tap some of these uh, free resources that these larger companies are providing. I believe Amazon has their AWS, which is their cloud-based system that continues to grow. We, we do and want to do just recognize that cloud computing is really that next wave of technology that is controlling so much of how we all do our work um, and, and save information and pass information. Um, and so being knowledgeable in cloud computing is really a, a hot opportunity to get involved. And I believe Amazon has some free courses and training to get certified in their AWS cloud. So there's kind of those resources that people can tap, really try their hand at some of the intro boot camps around coding, um, data science, of course, um, UX UI design, which is really about that uh, front end of a website. So really, really thinking about how we all experience the internet. Um, those folks who go into that space are really, are really creating those experiences. Um, so there are also uh, certificate programs even at the community college level. 
So not all the time do we have to go a traditional four-year university route, although a lot of them offer online programming as well, which of course seems to be the safest during the climate. But there's so many free resources from some of these larger companies that I would definitely encourage people to tap and try out and see if it works for them um, to get some of those certifications. And then even in our very own cities, there are also some workforce development programs that will sometimes pay for training. So I also encourage people to take a look at some of those those programs and also take a look at the local job market and what local employers are saying they're looking for in terms of talent. Um, I believe it was uh, Tesla who recently said they're no, they're no longer requiring that people have a college degree. The, the goal here is to do the work and demonstrate the work that you can do, be it having your own website to really show some of the projects that you've worked on independently. Um, a lot of people are self-taught, and that's what we have to remember um, as, 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 as black folks, too, that, you know, if we have access to a computer, we can spend a couple of hours a week really learning and teaching ourselves some of these skills. We can put ourselves in a great position um, to be competitive in the job market that, quite honestly, can't fill positions uh, quickly enough um, because there is so much need. I believe companies like Facebook, um, Google, Amazon, I mean, they haven't slowed down on hiring whatsoever. Um, so there's great opportunity out there, and it really just takes a little bit of time and commitment. And honestly, Dominique, some of these programs are like six months. So even if you have a family, if you're working full time, if you're able to dedicate a couple of hours a week, maybe it's in the evening, maybe it's, you know, on a, on a Saturday, the first couple hours before the kids wake up, you know, you can really create a plan for yourself to say, all right, I'm going to use the rest of this year to, uh, to get some level of certification and start looking for these opportunities. And there's so many great places, of course, the plug with TP Insights, um, there's Black Tech Twitter, Black Tech Pipeline, and so many amazing online black tech communities. And that's a great way to talk to other people about what you're learning, to find and share resources, and even to find job opportunities as well, even if it's not necessarily in your city. It could be across the country, but they're looking for remote workers. So just a bevy of opportunities. You just have to kind of be proactive of saying, let me fit this into my lifestyle. So I think a lot of people think, feel that, and, you know, I've had these conversations, I won't be able to do this. You know what I mean? If I go and try to get that Amazon training because I'm not a math wizard or because I'm not a mm -hmm. tech expert, I'm ruling myself out for those opportunities. Is, is that f accurate? So I think that it's easy to be, to, to kind of automatically accept the intimidation. I mean... We talk about cloud computing, artificial intelligence. I mean, it sounds like crop circles and ET, right? <laughs> like we, <laughs> we have to be honest that it sounds a little out there. But the great thing is that a lot of these programs are self-paced. And at the end of the day, so many people in tech, and this is what they don't tell you, a lot of the early folks and engineers that were, you know, at the Apples, at the Microsofts early on, they didn't have degrees. I literally read a book and started playing around with things and figuring things out, you know, and, and I always love when I follow um, engineers on Twitter and they're like, listen, most engineering is Googling anyway. <laughs> You're trying to find the right code. <laughs> and so just like remember that, you know, it's all about figuring things out and it's really just about how you think, right? It's about how do you think about and problem solve. And I think, you know, that helps to remove some of the intimidation factor. And YouTube University is perfect, too, because if you stumble on a problem, chances are you can type something into, into YouTube and someone will help, help you navigate how to get through the particular problem. And also, Dominique, I don't even want to limit this to just people who are technically inclined or looking to advance their technical skills. You know, tech, technology companies in particular, I mean, I think at, at this point everyone is a technology company. Um, a lot of it, too, is, you know, people operations, human resources management, you know, even being on, like, diversity, equity, and inclusion teams. You know, I really encourage folks to look at some of the job descriptions that some of these, these companies um, have, you know, or places that you might be interested in, and find out where you might be, where, where you might fit in, where your skill set could actually be beneficial, and really, you know, work work on your resume, work on how you present yourself, you know, really um, look at potential career coaches to help you better talk about your experiences. And I would also say for those particular those particular jobs, you know, what are some of the new software systems that are, they're using to manage talent? 
you know, just knowing and having a general knowledge of some of the tools that are being used can really be a step up in helping you to feel much more confident as you're approaching these opportunities. Um, and I can't stress enough either, Dominique, that network is so important. And of course, a lot of us are not able to leave our homes or, you know, to, to go to these conferences. I believe most of them are virtual, but I would really encourage folks now to, to really think about how they're, you know, what does your network look like? If you're looking to branch into the tech space or at least gain knowledge, what groups are you a part of, you know, be that online or what you're subscribed to. Of course, at the plug on Wednesdays, we send out an update and we talk all about all of the opportunities from jobs to competitions to scholarships, what have you. On Mondays, we have our weekly briefing to let people know about what's happening in the black tech ecosystem. And so it's like plug in to these spaces and places. Maybe when you're making a connection on LinkedIn, you know, create a dynamic LinkedIn profile. There's so many great tips on how to set that up and start building relationships with recruiters or start building relationships with uh, managers and directors and, you know, show up at these conferences, you know, talk about your work and what you're doing and, you know, find a way to start finding um, your tribe, you know, so to speak, and, and let that sort of help to open up doors um, so that way when there are job opportunities, you can get a referral directly. So I think we just have to be very strategic, especially in this digital climate. Um, but also, it's a really, really strong time right now where um, the tech industry in particular is really retooling the way that they think about racial inclusion. And so it's really time to get in there and, and really show show up. Now, that's a great point. I mean, as all these demonstrators across the country and around the world have shove the doors open we it's our responsibility to run through them while they remain open which might not be forever um so a couple of things you said that i want to you know just unpack a little bit so all of these free resources that you're talking about uh, for training like um the that are provided by big companies like amazon and google how would we find that stuff how would we access it yes honestly it really is as simple as going to their website um, looking for and Googling things like Google certificate programs or Amazon AWS certificate programs, um, IBM, Cisco, CompTIA. A lot of these places have had these programs and these trainings um, online for free for years. So we just, you know, make a spreadsheet <laughs> and share it with your friends, share it with your family members, your cousins, your aunts, your uncles, what have you, and be that resource and just find, I would start with the free opportunities first, and then I would look at what kind of boot camps exist that might be beneficial, like Flatiron Academy or Opportunity Hub. Um, there's Full Stack Academy. There's Khan Academy. There's so many other uh, programs that will sometimes do income share agreements as well if you qualify where, you know, you don't necessarily pay the tuition up front. But what they will do is when you get your first job, that's when we'll start to pay your tuition back. And they help you from a career services standpoint. Um, but the biggest thing is to know is to know what is it that you're interested and curious about and really frame your search around what you want to learn based on that. Um, and, you know, just just, you know, allow yourself to be a little fearful, but know that if if. If, if you just take the initiative, um, you can find just a wealth of opportunity because technology is constantly changing. And you may be bringing something to the table and, des and helping to design something for a community that, you know, this particular tech space didn't even think about. So, um, so yeah, just, you know, just, just don't, don't give up. Just keep searching. You'll find something that fits you for sure. And then as far as your publication, The Plug, like how do people subscribe to that? How do they get those briefings that you're talking about that come out on Wednesdays? Yes, absolutely. So we're just at TP, as in The Plug, Insights.com. And so all you have to do is sign up for an email and you get that every Monday and Wednesday. And we just continue to grow the community there. I want to say something about, you know, what you said about fear. I really f know this uh, that a lot of black people, especially older ones, but not just older ones, um, we're fearful about technology. We feel, and it's crazy because we are the biggest consumers of it, right? We're black Twitter and we got everybody got the newest phone and this and that. But I feel like people think you have to be some genius 
to be able to function in the tech space or even innovate in the tech space. And I know that's not true because of the interactions that I have with people that are working. Not to say that you all aren't geniuses, but you know <laughs> <laughs> that I know some regular folks like that are. <laughs> <laughs> but um, so you know, how do we get over that? I mean. It, some, I do see some illiteracy in tech, which is so bizarre. Like it's like people have these super great phones, but don't know how to upload a document. But on the other hand, I see us as these ardent consumers who don't necessarily benefit off the wealth that we are creating by being consumers. There's so much to unpack there, Dominique. Um, and but you're right. You know, there's not a a, a, a ton of genius. You know, you, you're not, not every person working in tech is, you know, is, is the Einstein or the Booker T. Washington, to give a black reference here. Um, but, you know, the goal here, and it really is, it really is kind of a lie that's told, right? Because what we've seen in technology has been, you know, white guys in hoodies, right, that come from a certain kind of background, that come from a certain kind of neighborhood, that went from, you know, went to a certain kind of school. And, you know, I grew up in Seattle, Washington, you know, South Seattle, single parent household. And, you know, my first, I always say my first startup was working at my aunt's hair salon, you know, and <laughs> no one ever called my community, you know, innovative. And that's part of the challenge is, you know, what, what society calls genius has never looked like us, even though we, we, we've had to innovate just out of bare necessity. And so I want us to remember that just because someone didn't come and place a center in our communities or start to rally around and build high rises and, you know, a, a, a autonomous vehicle center, you know, on the block, <laughs> that doesn't mean that, you know, we don't have entrepreneurs, we don't have inventors, we don't have creatives or what have you. You know, genius and innovation comes from anywhere and looks like everybody at the end of the day. And so I think that we have to, we have to re recall that. Um, and everyone has different kinds of opportunities. But we use what you have and you take that and you bring and you add value. And so I've always had to myself even re remind myself of that when I worked in tech, you know, and I started working at Microsoft in, in high school and learning how to code, you know, because a wow. black woman turned a, a storefront in the inner city of Seattle and was like, I'm going to teach brown kids programming and I'm going to get them jobs at Microsoft. <laughs> and we were the blackest things in that thing. So, wow. um, but, but like I said, you know, I, I started with sleeping up here at my aunt's hair salon. So, you know, so, so, but to me, I learned, I learned greater lessons there in terms of service, in terms of design, in terms of marketing, because I was on the ground. I talked to people. So that helps me understand how people think. So now when I'm creating a publication that's based on black journalism, it's like I know the community because I learned early days, we've been up here in the salon, how to talk to people, how to learn about people, and then design and, and give them the service they're looking for. That's customer discovery. You know, we talk about that in tech. So I would say, you know, again, it really just is about applying yourself building that network at the end of the day um, and, you know, continuing to stand up and show up. And the great thing, too, is that there are so many communities that are dedicated to the advancement of black and Latin communities um, getting into this space, you know, be it a code 2040. Um, there's even like a black girls code in tech girls camp. I mean, there's so many people and initiatives that you can tap into um, just to remind us that we, we've been here <laughs> at the end of the day. Um, and, and we need that. And there's um, a couple of professors that I really admire, like Dr. Courtney Cogburn out of Columbia University and Dr. Ruha Benjamin out of Princeton University. And these are incredible black women, incredible black researchers, as well as Dr. Um, Dr. Desmond Patton out of Columbia University. And their work specifically talks about the need for us to come together across disciplines to build technology because um, Dr. Ruha Benjamin calls it um, the new gym code and the bias <laughs> that gets built into tech because we don't have enough of us in, in these spaces and, and we're not co-creating, uh, you know, and so... So I think it's, it's important, of course, it's important when we talk about racial bias and racial uh, racial recognition technology. Um, I believe last week there was a story about a black man that was uh, misidentified through racial recognition software, and he was um, he was arrested um, falsely. And so, you know, if, if anything, I would say, Dominique, the imperative is we got to make sure, you know, we're training ourselves in these spaces 
so that we can combat some of this bias because it's the only folks who feel comfortable, the only folks feel, feeling like they deserve to be at these tables don't look like anybody that comes from the communities that we come from. Like we've counted ourselves out before we even got to play. So we just got to remember to the, that it is urgent. You know, it really is urgent. Even when we think about the needs of women, the needs of moms, the needs of whomever, communities across the board. I mean, there's so much nuance and diversity across the black community that everyone belongs there because the world is, the world is nuanced. So if you're that technologist that can come in and say, well, no, I know this community very intimately. This is a, this is a prime opportunity. We saw that with Black Panther. You know, the world always said we couldn't have a black superhero and they broke all kinds of records. Right. And so yes. all of those assumptions were false. So we need to we need to apply that logic to every single area in which we show up in where there is lack of representation of people that look like ourselves. Cheryl Dorsey, it's a pleasure to talk with you folks. TPinsights.com. Thanks so much. Such a pleasure. Thank you so much, Dominique. It is the front page Saturday Town Hall edition brought to you by the Independent Professionals Association at IndieWork.org, the great city of Los Angeles, community built, the great county of Los Angeles, and KJLH. I'm Dominique DePrima, Radio Free, 102.3 KJLH.